I would like to share a little bit about my testimony and how I came to Christ. It was at an FBC winter camp where the Lord saved me as a junior in high school. Uh, Growing up, I did not grow up as a Christian. Our family would go uh, maybe to church every Christmas and Easter. Anybody was in that same camp? Yeah. We called ourselves, uh, I guess we would identify as Catholic, and we would go to church every once in a while, but I never grew up hearing the gospel. Never grew up hearing the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. And as I look back on my life and I I consider my testimony, I can see the Lord drawing me to himself as a junior hire. During this time, my parents got a divorce, and that was an all-time low for me. It crushed me because my family was everything to me. I loved my family. I I valued my family so much, I, I just held on to them so tightly. And so to see this family broken up in that way left me shaken to my core, and it left me broken. And this is what the Lord used to ultimately draw me to himself. Broken, I searched everything I could. I pursued my sin however I could, seeking for satisfaction, for love, for true joy, for just a glimpse of it. And I would pursue anything at any cost just to get a glimpse of that back. I went throughout my high school years, and I pursued sin in every way that you could imagine. And I went down this spiraling tunnel to my own doom. My sin was killing me. It was deceiving me into thinking that it was good and that it offered true satisfaction and true love and true joy when every single time it left me feeling empty and worse than I had before. Sin was killing me until one day a couple of my friends from here invited me to our FBC high school winter camp. And it was at this winter camp that the Lord saved my soul. I went and I agreed to go because they said it was going to be a ton of fun. We were going to stay in cabins. We were going to have a sick time sledding down the mountains, uh, hanging out with friends, throwing snow at each other. I've never been in the snow before, so I was like, come on, let's go. So I agreed to go. My family had no money at the time to send me. The only way that I was able to go was because you were so faithful to provide camp scholarships. I got a full ride scholarship to that camp where the Lord saved me, and I'm so thankful. It was at this camp he he saved me. I had uh, never confessed my sins before, but we were sitting on bunk beds uh, in a cabin full of my friends who I thought were perfect Christians. I looked up to them, and I thought, wow, there's something so different about them. They're so cool. They're They're so happy all the time. They're so joyful all the time. And I watched as we sit on these bunk beds, and each one of them start to confess their sins after a morning session about our sinfulness. And they're confessing their sin, and they're broken over it. With many tears, they're confessing their sins. And it comes around, and I'm thinking, oh no, what am I going to say as it comes around to me? And it finally comes to me, and all I could do was spew out everything I thought was sin in my life. And it was at this moment that the Lord broke me, he humbled me, he showed me my sinfulness for the first time, and it was at this moment that our high school pastor at the time told me the saving gospel of Jesus Christ, that Christ died for my sins, and that he rose again three days later to offer me new life, to save me out of this slavery to sin, and to make me a slave of Christ. And at this moment, he freed me. After my life, uh, after he saved me by his grace, uh, I, as if the grace of God was not enough and the freedom of Christ was not already too overwhelming to me, I came down this mountain, began to faithfully serve this church, and you accepted me and embraced me immediately. You invested into me. You immediately embraced me and showed me the love of Christ. You held my hand as I walked towards Christ for the very first time. I remember immediately after Christ saved me, our high school pastor at the time, Morgan Maitland, uh, he immediately invested into me. He discipled me. I remember weeping with him through many, many trials. He gave me my first ever preaching opportunity, and he just poured into me each day. I remember in 2017, Robert Dotson, one of our elders who was just up here, took me on my first missions trip to Albania. 
just six months after Christ saved me, I was thinking, what, how could I possibly be accepted into this? And he did. That trip changed my life and sparked my heart for missions. In 2018, you supported me again, and you sent me back to Albania for two months as an intern. And I came back and served as Sean Farrell's pastoral intern in the college ministry. In 2018, you support, or 2019, you supported me, sent me to India for three months, and I came back and served in children's ministry on Sunday nights as Boots. Come on. <laughs> Most of your kids only know me as Boots, and I'm fine with that. Uh, it's, it was a fun time. In 2020, I served as our co-pastor of high school ministry. In 2021, you supported me again. You hired me as your junior high pastor, which is still to this day the greatest joy our junior hires are the best, the funnest. They're the best. Sheesh, okay? (laughs) Last year, you supported me and sent me to West Africa. This year, I finished our training center process. I'm heading back to India in August to preach at a youth conference, and I'll finish seminary at the end of the year. All this to say, I am so thankful for God's amazing grace in my life in giving me this amazing church family. You invested into me. You embraced me. You poured into me. I am a product of your faithfulness to me. 